Hi, I'm Jasmine Hupp, and I'm going to teach you how to start and grow your email list from zero. Now, make sure to listen out for all of the top mistakes that I call out, because if you make these mistakes, you could get banned from a lot of different email marketing software. And of course, stick around until the end, because I want to tell you my top tips for continuing to grow your email list once we get it started. So your first question may be, who needs an email list? And actually, everyone needs an email marketing list these days. Whether you're planning a party or doing a fundraiser, starting maybe your first merch line, starting a YouTube channel, or just asking someone to donate for your dog's birthday. An email list is a great way to communicate with a large group of people. Now say, if you know you're never going to want to communicate with more than 10 people at a time, you probably don't need an email marketing list. But in the long term, you may have an offering, you may have a workshop, you may have a book, you may become a coach or a consultant and want to share that with a larger group, a larger part of your community. An email list is the easiest way to get your message out to a large group of people. And I know what people say like, oh, I hate email, email's overwhelming, there's so much email, there's so much spam, it's just never gonna get read. Well, the truth is a lot of what we're posting on social media is not getting read either. There's less, folks are spending less and less time logging on and reading updates on social media. And so if we wanna get our message out, we need to send it out to folks in our community. And so that means either something like a text message or an email marketing list. You don't wanna be contacting folks individually every time you have something nice to announce or, or a resource to share. And an email marketing list is what you're going to need. So the first step in starting your list is just to start a spreadsheet. I use something like Google Drive and list the columns that you'd like to collect, the information that you'd like for the people on your list. Now, obviously the first column is email. You got that right. Now the next column I like to use is first name. The next column could be last name, but that's optional. Some lists, you don't actually care who the individual identities of every single person is on your list. You may not collect last name. Now, if you're into events or if you do things that are different by different locales, say maybe you have an event on the East Coast that's not offered on the West Coast, it's amazing if you can collect your list uh, members zip code or state and that'll help you divide the list up later once you get a larger list going and you have different things going by different geographics. If you don't think you'll do a lot of local events or a lot of events in a lot of locations, you can totally skip this step. There's kind of endless amounts of things you might want to collect about people on your list. Maybe their birthday because you want to send a, a birthday blessing out around that time. Maybe uh, something to do with how they met you or a reminder for yourself for that list and information that, that you need. So go ahead and put any of those columns into your spreadsheet and that's where we're gonna start. Filling up your list when you have zero names on that list, I know it looks really scary, that spreadsheet looks really, really blank right now, but don't worry, you actually know a lot more people than you think. You have a bunch of emails already, they're just in your email account somewhere and you're gonna do some phishing around your email account and around your computer to find email addresses of people you wanna add to your email newsletter. Now the key is you don't wanna just add every email address you've ever had access to to your email newsletter. No, you want to add folks who want to hear from you, folks who look forward to hearing from you, folks who say have done events with you, have worked with you, friends, maybe team members, uh, people you've met through meetups, etc. So what you're going to do is go ahead and open up your email account and go to the sent folder and just start looking at the emails that you've sent out. And a lot of the people that you've emailed, you're gonna add to your email list. As long as you've emailed them, you probably have a real connection with them. It's overwhelming to look through your inbox and try and find all the people you know. But if you've emailed them back, you probably have a connection. Maybe they wanna hear from you. Go ahead and look through all those emails you've sent and add any of the folks you think who'd like to hear from you on a more regular basis to your spreadsheet. Next, go ahead and search your computer for any kind of lost spreadsheets or guest lists that you might. You can search for the term email or search for uh, a different mailing list on your computer and just see maybe 
maybe you did an event in the past where you collected emails and you can add those email addresses to your newsletter now. You'd also check things like your Google Drive or a Dropbox and see if there's any spreadsheets that again, have the word email in it or are appropriate for your newsletter. Another trick is if you've sent calendar invites out to folks, say you wanna add everyone that you've had a client meeting with in the last year to a newsletter because you're gonna send those folks additional resources. Well, go into your calendar and the email addresses, the folks that you've invited to different meetings are gonna be listed in those calendar invites and you can pull those over and add those to your list. The next place that you can look is LinkedIn. Now the process for this changes every once in a while, so I'm not gonna show a screen recording or anything, but head over to LinkedIn, head up the help files and ask how you can export the data that you have on LinkedIn. Now you won't be able to export the email address of everyone that you've connected with on LinkedIn. That's a privacy setting that depends on what the LinkedIn person you've connected with has decided. So you'll be able to pull some email addresses from LinkedIn, but not a ton. Or maybe, you know, you, you look at the list and you use that list and you message those people individually on LinkedIn and say, hey, I'm starting my email newsletter. I'd love to have you on it. What's your email address? Now, the next place that you're gonna wanna look is in your contacts app or your address book, whatever you use. You can also check things like WhatsApp and Signal for friends that you have in your messaging pretty frequently. And again, with all of these platforms, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Signal, be brave. Ask folks for their email addresses. Most of the times folks would love to hear from you, honestly. They wanna find more ways to connect with you. They don't wanna be shy. They're not logging onto social media as much. They understand you don't have time to message everyone individually. So be brave, ask your favorite contacts, ask all your friends, hey, I'm starting my email newsletter. What's your email address? I'd love to add you. The next step after you've gathered your emails that you're going to market to and you've gotten some friends to, to add to your list, you've gotten some permission. Now that you've started to build your email list, the next step is to start talking to your email list, to start messaging folks. Now, there is an old marketing saying that you can either build your email list or you can sell to your email list, but you can't do both. And so at this time where you don't even necessarily have anything to sell to your audience, this is actually the perfect time to start your email's newsletter. You wanna start an email newsletter really focused on helping your audience out. You see, your audience gets advertisements from everyone and people want them to buy all sorts of things from the internet all the time. You don't wanna be another advertisement in their inbox. You wanna be a newsletter that your audience looks forward to. You wanna plan out an email newsletter strategy that allows you to deliver real value, real content to your audience. For example, you can talk about how you got started with your special skill or your industry. You can talk about what you learned by doing something unique. You can talk about how to do things that your audience might wanna learn how to do, or even as simple as just new recipes that you're cooking in the kitchen. It's really important to invest in your audience before you expect them to invest in you. So don't be afraid of giving away too much information. Information is pretty well available on the internet right now. Become that trusted go-to source for information by giving really great, clear how-to information to your audience via email. You've started your email list, you've started to message folks, folks are interested, they're responding, but oh my gosh, it's a little scary because also folks are unsubscribing and emails are coming back bounced or dead or vacation messages. Just know that on average, on my friends tend to change their corporate email addresses maybe every one to two years and they change their personal addresses every couple of years too. It's really normal to have a certain percentage of your email email addresses expire over time, unsubscribe, bounce, stop work. Don't worry, that's normal. What you need to do is continually refresh your email list with new folks that you're meeting. Thanks for sticking around till the end because I wanna make sure that you leave here with my tips on how to continue growing your email list so you're not stressed when you get those unsubscribe requests at all. So you can continue to do those tips that I mentioned at the beginning where you're harvesting email addresses out of your inbox, out of your calendar invites. Then you need to get really great at inviting people to join your email list. That means when you're on social media, instead of maybe giving away information, a download for free, you can say, hey, send me your email and cell phone number and I'll, I'll text it to you, I'll email it to you, and that way you've got their email address for future communication. If you are offering a workshop, say in person, make sure there's a sign-up sheet at the beginning of the workshop where folks can put on their email address. 
Or say you're giving a presentation in a situation where you don't get a copy of the emails of the folks who are registered, make sure you make an offer to the audience like, hey, email me to download my slides or email me your questions. And that way, as many folks in the audience as possible email you at the end of that presentation, you can add those folks to your list. Hope with all those tips, you can grow a really healthy, active list of folks who are really, truly interested in what you do and how you offer it. I'll see you back at the Jasmine Hub channel for more marketing tips or head over to jasminehub.com to download my free marketing how-to guides.